right, well, now it is time for me to talk about my week one picks for this NFL season. You know, on Thursday night, of course, the Broncos beat the Panthers after Graham Gano missed what should have been, in his case, the uh, game-winning field goal, but it was not to be. So the defending Super Bowl champions opened up with a win. So uh, tomorrow we have Tampa Bay traveling uh, to Atlanta, and in this game, uh, I really think the Buccaneers are going to start showing everyone that they are to be taken seriously. They're one of the true sleeper teams in the NFL this year. Uh, I think Jameis Winston is going to have a, a big game. And, uh, you know, Mike Evans, Vincent Jackson, he has good receiving targets to throw to. Um, and meanwhile, you know, Matt Ryan, I just have a feeling that he's going to decline this year. You know, he's been having a, a rough go of it lately. And Gerald McCoy, Buccaneers defensive lineman, you want to keep an eye out for him. Uh, he could really wreak havoc on the uh, Atlanta backfield. So I'm taking the Buccaneers to win that game. Uh, with the Cincinnati Bengals traveling to take on the New York Jets. You know, uh, I think Ryan Fitzpatrick honestly carried over the disaster that was the season finale that cost the Jets a playoff spot last year into the preseason, played poor there, and he'll carry it into the regular season. So you really wonder where he got off on thinking that he was deserving of such a fat contract, which he obviously did not get. But, um, you know, the Jets are the home team in this one. And, uh, you know, I do think that, though, that the hosts will struggle to stop uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Hill, the Cincinnati running back. I think he'll have a big day. And, uh, you know, the Jets are going to have a tough time on defense because Damon Snacks Henderson has left for uh, not necessarily uh, greener pastures, the green of the Jets, but he is staying in the state of New or not in the state of New York, in New Jersey, really, with the New York Giants. He is gone, and uh, Sheldon Richardson suspended. So that's really going to hurt the New York defense. So I'm taking Cincinnati to get the road win. And that's kind of the theme you will notice during the shows. I'm going to be picking a lot of road teams in week one. Now, uh, Oakland at New Orleans. Uh, I'm really backing Derek Carr to have a big day against a really, really poor Saints defense. I mean, the Saints defense gave up 27 or more points in nine games last season. And Derek Carr, I think, could really take off this year. I am planning to start him over Andrew Luck in fantasy football, as a matter of fact. He just is a very, very bright young talent. And uh, I think uh, Khalil Mack could really present a lot of problems uh, for the Saints' offensive line and in turn uh, inflict a lot of misery upon Drew Brees. But we will see how that Saints O-line holds up. But I'm picking Oakland to go on the road and win in the Superdome. Chargers at Chiefs. Uh, you know, this is a battle of two teams that I don't really see as contenders, two of the weaker teams uh, in the NFL, one of which is looking to move. But, uh, you know, Jamal Charles is going to be out in this game. But interestingly enough, the Chiefs had a better record last year with uh, Spencer Ware and Charkandrick West running the ball. So, you know, obviously Phillip Rivers is going to try to get off to a good start, but you know, I really have to give the Chiefs a, a big edge in this one, too, um, on history. Not necessarily a big edge, but a significant one, because, uh, you know, they just uh, absolutely destroyed the Chargers last year, 33-3, to and swept the um, divisional series. So uh, I think that does have a carryover effect into opening day, and uh, I'm going to back the uh, Chiefs to get the W at home. So uh, for the Bills traveling to take on the Baltimore Ravens, uh, Joe Flacco, you know, a lot of people uh, like to talk about, you know, Mike Wallace, what can he do this year? Is Steve Smith going to be back healthy after uh, his torn Achilles last year? It doesn't really matter all that much because Joe Flacco, for a rare occasion, uh, seems like he'll actually have uh, a plethora of options to throw to. He has Breshad Perryman and... Uh, Kamar Aiken, who really burst onto the scene last year. So, uh, you know, I do think that the Ravens' offense is going to have uh, plenty of success moving the ball at home, uh, in, in part because the Bills are going to be without their uh, main pass rusher, Marcel Darius. So that's really going to hurt the Bills. You know, uh, Tyrod Taylor could uh, have a big game, you know, both running and throwing the ball. But I'm going to take the Ravens to get this victory at home. Now, uh, later in the day, uh, as we look look ahead, well, actually, still going off the 1 o'clock games here, 
before we start moving into the good stuff. Uh, Bears uh, at Texans. Yes, the Bears are playing the Texans. Uh, you know, the Chicago has been uh, ragged on, and they do like to get ragged on a lot, uh, or at least, you know, fans and pundits like to really just criticize the team for having so much faith in Jay Cutler, given his uh, rotten attitude over the years. But it did kind of seem to me like he genuinely cared last year. And there is so much hype surrounding, uh, you know, the um, Texans signing Brock Osweiler away from Denver, picking up Lamar Miller, who many people, including myself, are backing to have a big year in fantasy. But, you know, I just, uh, I don't know if the Texans are ready to handle the hype. Uh, you know, the um, Bears have made positive additions to their defense with, uh, you know, Danny Trevathan and uh, Jarrell Freeman. So I think they're going to get a lot of pressure on Brock Osweiler. I think he's going to be rattled. And the Bears have a very solid run defense too, so I don't necessarily see Lamar Miller having a lot of success uh, running the ball either. So I think the Bears defense uh, gets them the road victory. In terms of probably the easiest pick uh, game to pick this week, I'm going to take the Green Bay Packers to trounce the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yes, the Jaguars uh, have legitimate reason for optimism. Blake Bortles looks like a legitimate franchise quarterback, and he has two very uh, strong targets, talented targets to throw to with Allen Robinson and Allen Hearns, you know, uh, A&A. But uh, at the same time, you know, the Packers, they're uh, one of the favorites from the Super Bowl this year. You know, Aaron Rodgers, you know, is going to come out firing on all cylinders, uh, especially with Randall Cobb and Jordy Nelson, both bursting at the seams, healthy, ready to go. I'm taking the Packers to win that game by double digits. In terms of uh, the intriguing late game from my point of view, the New York Giants will travel to take on the Dallas Cowboys, where, you know, Dallas Cowboy fans, they're not panicking, believe it or not, over uh, the loss of Tony Romo, who just seems on the last legs of his NFL career because Dak Prescott looked like by far the best rookie quarterback in preseason. Very mobile, accurate, big arm strength, the Mississippi State product, uh, could really help hold it down until Romo's back and healthy. Uh, if such a uh, state of health exists, really, for Romo, I'm just not sure about his back anymore. But at any rate, Prescott could um, lead the Cowboys to victory in this one. You know, um, very talented player. But, uh, you know, the Giants added Damon Snacks, Henderson on the interior. They really invested in that defense, so I think they're going to get a big pass rush in there uh, with a solid scheme under uh, new head coach Ben McAdoo. But, uh, you know, I, I like the Giants to pull out a close one here. I think Eli Manning will have a solid performance. You know, Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, is going to have a big game because, you know, Dallas has a decent secondary, but really no one who's going to come in there ready to shut him down. And it should be also be interesting to see what uh, Sterling Shepard and Victor Cruz can do. So I think that uh, passing attack of the Giants is going to lead them to a road victory. Uh, for the Lions at the Colts, you know, the, the Colts uh, do have uh, quite a uh, number of problems personnel-wise heading into this game. Their best O-lineman, uh, Jack uh, Muhart, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, he's out. He's not going to be playing. Uh, same uh, problem with Vontae Davis. Vontae Davis is injured. He is a uh, terrific cover corner, and Darius Miller isn't practicing. So really, uh, you know, a lot of clouds hanging over uh, this Colts team even though they do plan to a dome, <laughs> uh, as do their uh, visitors, the Detroit Lions. You know, uh, Marvin Jones, I think, will be uh, a serviceable number one. For Matt Stafford, obviously it hurts that uh, Calvin Johnson retired, but you know, he seemed kind of past it last uh, season anyway. So um, I, it, it's a tough game to call. I'm not really high on either of these two teams this year, although a healthy Andrew Luck makes a big difference because of all these issues that the Colts are having heading in, uh, I'm going to take the Lions to win a very close one uh, on the road. Now, uh, looking at the Monday night games, the Steelers travel to take on the Washington Redskins, and uh, you know, the Steelers' offense is going to, if they didn't rely upon Antonio Brown heavily enough already, well, it's they're going to take that reliance to the next level because Martavis Bryant is out for the year with injury, and uh, Le'Veon Bell, is suspended. You know, Bell's a great back, and that really hurts the Steelers that he's going to be missing. 
So, you know, Antonio Brown is the best wide receiver in the NFL. Big Ben Roethlisberger is going to be ready to go. But I do think that uh, home field advantage plays into the Redskins' uh, hands in this week one contest. You know, regardless of how um, healthy Matt Jones is, that is a question mark for the Skins. Uh, I think Kirk Cousins is going to come out there ready to play. He has a point to prove that last year was not just a one-year wonder. He's playing under the franchise tag, too. So he's, you know, going to try to, you know, earn that that big, big money deal. So I think the Redskins are going to uh, open their season with a victory at home. Now, uh, in terms of a battle of possibly the two um, worst teams in the NFL, what it could turn out to be, the Rams are traveling not too far within the state of California. The new Los Angeles Rams are going to take on the uh, San Francisco 49ers, even though they should be the Santa Clara 49ers. You know, uh, some people think that uh, Colin Kaepernick's, you know, kneeling before the national anthem could provide a distraction for the 49ers. Not going to go into the whole political side of things on this pick show. Uh, but, you know, it just it is interesting to note how uh, Chip Kelly picked, who is, in my opinion, the worst quarterback in the NFL. I mean, you look at the numbers, his career win-loss record is just atrocious. Blaine Gabbert is a terrible quarterback. He cannot handle pressure, zero pocket presence whatsoever. It's only a matter of time before Colin Kaepernick wins that job back. Um, so I think the 49ers, uh, you know, they're not a team that I'm really uh, high on. But then again, you know, the Rams picked Jared Goff number one, and he's third on the depth chart because he's nowhere near ready to go. Case Keenum is not going to uh, scare me either. So, you know, it is a toss-up game between two uh, pretty poor teams. And uh, in this one, I'm going to go with home field advantage as the tiebreaker. Give me San Francisco to win an ugly Monday night football game. So with that, I leave you through my picks. As I mentioned, dominated by road teams. And uh, as they say, any given Sunday, any team can beat anyone. And I look forward to seeing what happens as week one plays out.